Welcome everyone to the special edition of Mega Listing Agent. So I'm Matt's coach, Aaron Simons, uh, co-host of the Mega Listing Agent. My partner, Emily Baker, unfortunately is under the weather today. So we won't have Emily here with us, but that's okay. Cause we've got a great interview with, of course, the one and only Preston Murphy and his director of marketing, Kate Keenan, who will be, and there she is. All right. And so we're excited to have you guys today because the reason we wanted to do this is you are way ahead of the pack in terms of really effectively talking about your seller value proposition. And so we're going to have some fun. We're going to go through all of it. We've got 45 minutes. Um, and so this is being recorded. So if some of you think we might be going on the fast side, don't worry, you'll get the recording. And before we get into it though, Preston, if you just want to give us a little bit of your background, who you are, where you're from, what you're up to, that'd be awesome. Yeah, awesome. Well, thanks for having me today, Aaron. Uh, yes, and um, special shout out to Emily, my maps coach, who's got COVID, and I'm under the weather too a little bit. So <laughs> it's just been a week. Oh, you're here. What's her excuse, though? No. Yeah, right. Uh, so um, I started in real estate at 19, so roughly uh, it was 2005. Um, had no reason to be in real estate other than quite candidly. Um, I was coming home from a frat party and saw a real estate sign on the side of the road that said, get your license um, on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 6 to 10 p.m. So that was my introduction to real estate. I uh, started my business um, at a small independent company in Pace, Florida, um, was there about eight years and was frankly uh, exhausted. I was working you know, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It felt like probably selling 50 to 60 houses a year by myself. Uh, no transaction coordinator, no administrative assistant. Uh, that was not a life worth living, um, if I'm being honest. And at the time, uh, because there was not, um, right, not a lot of national advertising about Keller Williams, I just didn't know about Keller Williams until somebody introduced me, or invited me to Bold. So I'm kind of a product of Bold. Uh, that was my first introduction to Keller Williams way before I ever came to KW. And going through Bold uh, taught me about leverage and systems and models and then me and my uh, former business partner started our current team, the Harmon Murphy Group, in 2013 and um, started this, uh, I like to think, is a great business. And then I became the team leader of Keller Williams Realty Gulf Coast in 2017, I believe. And so I'm now the team leader of the Market Center, and I also run a really great team. And um, here we are. And we're, in, well, first... we're based out of Pensacola, Florida, along the Gulf Coast. First off, you so casually threw out, you were doing 50 to 60 deals a year, right? Um, at such a young age. Just curious, what did you do to ramp up to that level of production? Because that, that right so, there, yeah, I think people are sitting there wondering, wait a minute, what was he yeah. doing? You so, know? Yeah, definitely. So, you know, Facebook came out in 2007. And so you had to have a college uh, somewhere in that time frame. So back in 05, 06, 07, I was frankly using MySpace and Facebook uh, to sell houses to all of my college friends, parents who did not want to, um, for lack of a better word, you know, I guess just waste or spend money on a dorm room. They would rather have their uh, college age kids um, in an investment property. So, you know, I will also say that back then, not to sound ageist, but right in 2005, real estate wasn't sexy. It wasn't cool. It wasn't trendy in a lot of ways. There was no millionaire whatever show on Bravo or Selling Sunset. So, you know, I was in an industry where people were probably two to three times my age. And um, it was kind of like first movers advantage around social media. So that's actually how I got my start was using the social media space to to reach out to you know, people that were first time home buyers and or their parents. Got it. All right. Now, before we get further, I want to make sure we had give Kate a chance to introduce herself because she's obviously an integral part of the team. So, Kate, tell everyone who you are. Hi, guys. My name is Kate Keenan. I am a Pensacola native and I went to the University of West Florida and studied marketing. Um, I have some previous experience doing marketing related tasks. Um, for my parents' team, who are also a part of Keller Williams, um, and I joined the Harmon Murphy Group about a year and a half ago as the marketing assistant. So you grew up in real estate? Yes, I did. I was not pushed into it. I was always very interested in real estate, but um, I am very fortunate that I was able to grow up seeing real estate and how everything worked that way. I had a better grasp whenever I came onto this team. Got it. Now, let me ask you a question, because a lot of people out there 
one of the hardest um, or one of the cha most challenging roles that people, agents are looking to hire or even contract with, right? If they're not ready to bring on someone full time, is that director of marketing um, person. Uh, sure. What are you like? What are the three things you're responsible for most on the team? So I would bring it down to three pillars. There's promoting our listings, promoting right. agents' personal brands, and then uh, promoting our business model to other agents. Got it. Got it. Preston, anything you want to add to what Kate, the importance uh, of Kate? Kate, <laughs> Kate has all encompassing roles, but certainly uh, she has done an exceptional job for us. And I would say mainly um, it's kind of taking all of these crazy ideas that I have and putting it in what you'll see today is in our seller guide, just this package that's easy for us to convey and curate a just a more seamless conversation with our sellers in terms of transparency and everything else. Right on. Now, before we share the package and start running through it, I mean, what was the like? How did you create this package? What was happening in your business that you said, you know what? Let me simplify this. Let me create this package. Let me create these value propositions for these these uh, commission tiers. Like, what was happening in the business that that was the impetus for you to create the package? Definitely, you know, with a with a growing team, you know, my thought is always to ensure that everybody across the team is sort of speaking the same language, right? How are we being transparent? How are we making sure that every seller can digest the information in an easier way? And how do we make sure that everybody across the team is speaking the same language? So I would say that was the problem or the challenge across our business. And okay. so the seller guide was a way for us just to make sure that the information was more digestible. Yeah. So, so for you, the challenge was you wanted to make sure all your team members were on the same page in the conversation you're having with the sellers. How, however, was there any challenge that you guys were having with sellers that you said, wait a minute, let's break down the compensation. Let's break down the marketing in this format so that we're not getting certain objections. Did, were you seeing that at all? Or was it really just getting your team members in alignment? It was really more about just getting our team members in alignment. But I would also say, you know, I, and, you know, welcome to real estate. There are going to be certain challenges around um, let's just, for, for lack of a better word, call our phrase, call it being beat up about the commission, right? What are, what exactly are you doing to earn this, this level of a commission rate or whatever that might be uh, for you and anybody else on the call. And so thinking through uh, going to the national events over the past couple of years, whether that be mega camp or family reunion, we kept hearing from Gary and obviously other of our executive leadership team and other mega agents from the stage about, are we clearly articulating our value proposition? Do we have a menu of services? And um, how are you explaining that in such a way that's easier for the customers to understand and then choose something, right, that's more in alignment with what they're looking for and also their budget, right? Yeah. Now, as a result of implementing the menu of services, um, is there anything noticeable that you've seen or any changes other than, uh, I mean, I don't know, I guess that's the question. What changes have you seen as a result of oh, going well, from? Okay, so for years, and if I'm just being um, open and honest about this, you know, we would hear from different mega agents on stages talking about the menu of services as they would start to implement it in their businesses. And I had always had a little bit of a myth, right? A, a myth understanding, if you will, about, you know, the comment I had always heard was if you have three different packages, right, people would always choose the middle one because folks don't want to be perceived as sort of cheap. Let's just yeah. call it that. And I thought there's no way, right? Like in our market, I would say our team was naturally taking listings higher than a lot of the other folks teams in our local area. And so I thought that there's no way people are going to choose an even higher rate when the customary uh, rate in our area is a little lower. Mm -hmm. Well, oddly enough, exactly what the mega agents were saying from the stage is exactly what has happened in our market. People are choosing more often the middle package, um, which is a higher percentage. And I don't really want to get into a lot of percentages because I know that's a common, you know, that's a little bit of a challenge in our in our industry at this point. But let's just say it's there higher is than... There is no... Yeah, you're broken up. You broke up a little bit there, but yeah, the people are choosing the middle package, and um, the conversation just flows so much, e just easier. That's it. Right. 
Well, without further ado, if it's okay, I'm going to share the screen and we're just going to run through your package, you know, page by page and just really show everyone um, and just give input about uh, each page and, you know, maybe even some scripting if that's okay. Sure. All right. So here we go. And by the way, is, is this in terms of size, is this showing up okay for you guys? Yes. Okay, perfect. All right, so your seller marketing strategies, a helpful guide with eight practical and creative strategies to boost your home marketing and selling skills. Um, so it starts off with attracting buyers. Anything? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so this section was really, uh, frankly, taken out of shift. You know, the information that we learned from shift when Gary talks about broadening the pool of buyers and exposing the property to the most number of people. And this also, I think, speaks to our fiduciary duty as real estate professionals to ensure that we're talking about all of the different sort of mofers, if you will, that could, um, and creative financing options that could create more opportunity for our sellers. So for example, seller contributions, I know that other people call them seller concessions, depending on which market you in are in across the country, but seller contributions, there's a lot of sellers right now who might be offering five, 10, $15,000 towards a buyer's total closing cost. And so what we thought is if we can have these discussions on the front end, how could we then and in our world, right? How can Kate begin to market these things from the very beginning, whether that be our social media post, whether that be our just listed you know, postcards, every door direct mail, uh, no yeah. matter what marketing channel we're using, how do we call greater attention to the fact that this particular seller is interested in helping buyers with their closing cost? So um, that's why we put that number one. Number two, you know, seller funded permanent buy downs and seller funded temporary buy downs. Again, same thing uh, in this sort of higher interest rate market that we have all dealt with over the past couple, let's just call it several months or the past year. Uh, this is a really great way for us to not only explain to the seller what the challenges are for buyers, but also how we can uh, lessen that burden that they're experiencing by just offering either temporary or permanent buy down so that we can broaden the pool of buyers who might be interested. Again, if we discuss this on the front end, and they are bought in to the idea and the reasons why it's important, then we, once we take that listing, can then talk about this from the front end in terms of the marketing so that it's not just buried in the agent notes somewhere. It allows us to promote it to a wider audience. <laughs> what, what I love already out of the gate about the package is you go straight into how you're going to attract buyers for their home. We haven't got to you. We haven't got to the team. We haven't got to any of that. It's right out of the gate. Here's how we're going to make you more attractive as a seller to net you more money. Here are the options. Definitely. And, you know, one thing about that, that is the whole reason why we jump right into it. Because I remember, gosh, this was years ago at Family Reunion. I remember Ben Kinney talking about something kind of like his script was he would show up at the door, right? Shake the person's hand and he would say, is there anything other than price you'd like to talk about today? In a lot of cases, right, the sellers or whoever it might be, they don't understand the mechanics. And so for them, just as just as if the NAR buyers and sellers trends showcases, a lot of sellers, they want to talk about the price, right? What price are you going to get me? How are you going to expose my property? And so that's why we go into it immediately. Not a lot of hoopla about who we are and what we've done. Like they've called us for a reason. They probably already know our goodwill and reputation. Let's get into the bulk of it right off the bat. <laughs> Yeah. And like you said, I mean, Gary shared these, he called them mortgage hacks. Um, when, when we saw, I can't remember if it was last year or in 22, but when we knew and we saw rates going up, him and Jason Abrams and Jay, they got together, they created that mortgage hack presentation. And really you just took that and put that to good use right here in your seller package. Between the mortgage playbooks and between the shift book and this, the section about creative financing options and all of that, we have taken all of that sort of intellectual property from the industry and we have put it in a succinct format that we can easily discuss. And to the first point that we made, this ensures that everybody across our team is is really fulfilling their fiduciary duty to ensure that every one of our uh, prospective sellers understands the options that are available to them. And it also just showcases our experience too. <laughs> and I saw Jose in the chat, he asked about the assumable mortgages. Now I've got a couple of clients in my roster who have actually successfully completed sales with the assumable mortgages. In Pensacola, have you guys uh, been able to do that yet? Um, 
let's just say we're on the front end of that. Okay. Oh, the, the yeah. Well, and actually you, that's, you bring up a good point because so much of even just this call today, as well as just classes that we were having, not only at our market center, since I'm the team leader, are centered around how do we ensure that other agents in our market also are having these discussions. That's why this is not some secret. This is why we're happy to present this sort of tool and resource today, because the the, the truth is, is that if more real estate professionals were having those conversations up front, we would know that there are more assumable options. We would know that there are more sellers who are open to owner financing. Quite candidly, uh, when we first started having this conversation, so many of our sellers were like, oh my gosh, yes, that's a brilliant option. We'd love, um, especially right now, to offer owner financing. We own the home outright. We'd love to earn a higher, you know, sort of a higher interest rate um, on this particular thing, keep the property as collateral, right? So there's so many of our sellers were like, oh, thank you for bringing that to our attention. This is a great option for us. Yeah. And like I said, just the fact that you're talking about it when not a lot of agents are, you're already differentiating yourself against the competition. Well, and the byproduct is, right, even with our team, we've got a lot of buyers too, right? And we have a lot of buyers who are interested in assumable mortgages. We have a lot of buyers who are interested in owner financing. And so the more agents who are talking about this at their appointments, the more opportunity exists for all of us, because now those variables, those financing um options are now going to be showcased in the MLS under the financing section. Whereas before we would search for owner financing, we would search for assumable loans and barely anything showed up. That's yeah. not because nobody's interested. That's frankly because real estate professionals aren't probably talking about it at the highest level possible with their customers. Agreed. So section one was about attracting buyers. Now we're moving into section two, which is your seller marketing tactics. And it starts out right here with uh, professional photography, which I love. Yeah, so this section, so of course, the, at first we talk about the strategies, then we go into the tactics, and the marketing tactics are first about, as we before we set them up with the packages, right, and have them choose, we want to help them understand all of the things that we are capable of doing, and when I say we, meaning ultimately Kate, the genius there, what is our marketing department capable of doing such that you get the option to customize and curate your own experience as a, a seller? So we just go into and provide examples versus just listing them right on a sheet going, oh, okay, well, we can do professional photography. We can do aerial drone photography. We want to showcase to them, these are properties that we have listed in the past, and this is the quality of what we produce for our sellers. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I think we underplay our hand with professional photography because it's one of those things that in real estate, we're in it every day. We just assume that, okay, we take a listing. Of course, we're going to have professional photos, but look. You know, I got in in 2004 and everyone was still taking their own photos. Like professional mm -hmm. photography wasn't yet common practice. And maybe it's not common practice because I still see plenty of non-professional photos out there. However, to the consumer, they're not in it every day like us. They don't know that, you know, we're doing professional photography, right? So just talking about it, even though it's become standard of practice, I still think it's a huge value proposition. 100%. In fact, I mean, I would argue for me, and it sounds like for you too, you know, professional photography is table stakes. In fact, me and my business partner started in 2006, just we made the decision that it didn't matter if it was a $100,000 property or a million dollar property, our standard for our team was going to be professional photography across the board. You yeah. would think that that would, okay, I don't want to sound condescending, but I believe that professional photography should be the standard. And yet just yesterday, I saw a $925,000 listing with atrocious photos. And I'm sure that there are other, you know, maps cust clients on this call who have seen the same thing in their market. So I don't, I believe you're correct that we do need to dive in further and provide examples of why this is just another way that we can help our sellers get maximum exposure for their property. Yeah, so what I want the audience to hear is you don't have to overcomplicate your value proposition. We think that, you know, this is, everyone assumes that this is happening. The consumer doesn't. So this is, this is value. Yeah, so we just go. So you see professional photography, you see aerial drone photography. Yeah. We also talk our, about our ability, right, to do social media ads. And we, of course, we do those all through command, being able to do um, Facebook ads, Instagram, Google, you know, the whole thing. So we talk about our, also, I, I'm kind of skipping around here, but I want to make sure that the, the audience kind of hears, we're talking about the social dynamic, 
We're talking about professional photography in the digital space. As you can see right there, we're also talking about every door direct mail, so print. So we're also letting them know that we're trying to hit every potential buyer, no matter what space they prefer to live in, right? If it's print, if it's digital, if it's social, we're, we're giving them a multitude of options that we can curate for their particular listing experience. So social media ads, you can see right there, every door direct mail. We also do that through command with real mailers. Um, Kate actually just puts together, um, designs our own postcard, and then we upload those into command. We do it straight from the hub, if you will. Now, um, real quick, let me just say, because obviously chat is blowing up about your wonderful package and everybody wanting it. And, you know, um, you are creating an Etsy template that's going to be available in the next couple of days that we're going to push out to everybody. So for everyone who's, you know, salivating, yes, you, you will be able to create your own with the template. We're going to get the resources out to you. And we'll talk a little bit about that at the end as well. So I just, I just want to quiet everyone down for a minute because they're getting very excited about your package. Yes. Yes, we will have an Etsy template available in the next couple of days, and it'll allow you to change your own logo, um, if, add in your own professional photography as examples, and it'll be great. So real quick, obviously, you're doing, you're sending the postcards out through command. However, you know, Kate, you're creating uh, your own template, if you will, um, but you're doing it with what program? Canva? Yes, Canva Pro. Okay, there you go. There you go. Virtual staging. Yeah, I mean, that's just another option that we do. Um, and again, I think it's really important, like, for example, these, um, well, I'm here, I am using my mouse, I'm not even on the screen, <laughs> okay, but you can see, we just kind of, we articulate to the sellers, like, we have a couple of examples of houses where we had to add furniture, right, we have a couple of examples of where our customers had to move out, right, in our area, it's a big military area, so people are PCSing a lot. And so sometimes they can't get all of their stuff out before we actually get ready to go live. And so in those cases, we remove furniture and other belongings. Of course, in our area, there's a lot of water frontage. So we always want to showcase our ability to do that, like sort of dusk or dawn photos, which really pop online and capture more um, views, if you will, in the online space. And then with the new construction, you know, if something's um, brand new construction, we can use virtual staging or virtual photography, something like box brownie, where we can uh, render it in a better light. Yeah. yeah, I would say Box Brownie is probably the number one resource people use for the virtual staging or um, and it's typically between eight and fifteen dollars per photo is what it costs for those of you that aren't using Box Brownie yet. Awesome. Yeah, Phenomenal. We, love it. We, we totally love it. And again, we don't take this for granted because as real estate professionals, we say, oh, we can do virtual staging. That's actually one of the other if there was a challenge or a problem before when we just had a list of things that we would do. That was not providing as much context to the customer as we believe it actually did. In this scenario, when we have this template, again, not only does it allow all of our agents to speak the same language, but it also provides real life examples to the seller as what we actually mean by that and why it's so much, why it shows up better for them. And this is accessible to everybody. So even for brand new agents who are going on their first appointment, Everything we've talked about so far is accessible to everybody. Now, your curb appeal and lawn service, <laughs> say something on this real quick. Yeah, this is definitely um, a problem that existed in our business um, before we had this service. And, you know, again, we just partnered up with, you know, a, a lawn care company, a landscaper um, who opted, who just, you know, I don't want to, there's, it's a little bit complex, but basically we met with the landscaper, talked about the needs that we had in our business again, because we had a lot of people moving in and out very, very quickly. And they weren't always able to get around to sprucing up their, you know, adding more pine straw, adding more mulch, making sure the lawn was cut. And what I think that this speaks to ultimately is that a lot of our sellers love the convenience of this. I'm busy moving. We've got a transfer. We've got a PCS. We're coming in, this and that and the other. We just want somebody to take care of it. Can you just give us the level of convenience? Sure, they probably can get out there and cut their lawn in 30 minutes. It's probably not that big of a deal. But for them, it is a big deal. And if we have this a landscaper or lawn care company available to assist and do it for them, they love it. That's a great done for you solution. I love that. Okay. And then videography. Matterport, pretty straightforward. 
Yeah, just uh, do a simple YouTube walkthrough video that's not professional, if you will. It's just our listing manager walks through the property again to make sure uh, we believe that consumers like to have to understand the flow of the floor plan. So that's just a simple YouTube walkthrough video. And then the professional videography is another example of what would be available to someone who um, is more interested in the professional version of it. Okay. Um, Matter, by the way, I don't know. I don't know if you can showcase this or not. But when you click on Matterport and some of the other things, it takes you to real life examples of a Matterport. It just opens it up. So the reason why we linked this to real life examples is because what this package has also done has given me the ability to host more virtual, more regularly scheduled, more frequent virtual listing appointments where I can talk about it, then click on it and then show them examples of what that looks like and what it means. Awesome. And then... Again, web syndication is something that happens automatically, and yet the consumer doesn't know that. And this is one of those freebies that gets a, it's a lot of bang for the buck, which is, yeah, I think, underplayed by us. Sure. And previously, you know, K KW had, there was a graphic that we got somewhere from KW that yeah, had the, the 833. It was so big, right? And so we actually just, uh, Kate narrowed this down to the ones that we hear often from our sellers, you know, Zillow, Trulia, Realtor.com, Homes.com, and HomeFinder. Those are at least the ones in our market that a lot of the consumers talk about frequently. So we just showcased and highlighted absolutely you know, your listing is going to be exposed to the biggest portals on the planet, syndicated to the biggest portals on the planet. And we don't even talk about the rest of them. That's the only ones they care about in our market. All right. Now you're fancy with your illuminated signage. Illuminated signage as well. Uh, it's just another um, example of something that we can do at our market. And by the way, I would also point out here that this is a living and breathing document. You know, I know that there are a lot of floor plan companies that are out there, right? So just in our local MLS area, just this week, uh, they're now offering QB Casa to us, which is a 2D and then, of course, has the ability to have 3D floor plans. That, yeah. I believe, is also something that consumers uh, really gravitate towards in our local market area. And so we are going to be adding this next week QB Casa to our lineup of things that we can do. Hmm. I think Box Friday might do floor plan as well. They do, they do as well. So QB Casa is free through. through our MLS. We get that as a service from our MLS for free. And the add-on is the 3D stuff. And we just did an example of it just yesterday. It works brilliantly. It even adds um, dimensions to it. And I know that there's a lot of different programs out there and I'm sure your MLS offers uh, different things as well. I'm just trying to make the point that this is a living, breathing document as uh, consumer preferences change. Now, okay, this this is, I think, the most important part now of the whole package in light of everything that's going on in our industry. It's the tiered package system, correct? It's definitely. Uh, this is about. This was really about. Again, how do we? How do we showcase our value in a clear and concise way? How do we sort of have this client centric approach where they can curate based on their own budget? Uh, things that they're the most interested in, and how do we have clarity around that conversation such that there is no ambiguity about what it is that uh, our responsibilities are, are in terms of the marketing side of their listing. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to do two things right now. Number one, I'm going to show the next page, and then I'm going to bring it back to this page, right? Because I know, uh, you know, this is, this is the next page where they're now, you know, choosing the package, if you will, gold, silver, bronze, all right? So I want everyone to see that. However, let's go back to what's in those packages. And would you walk us through this as if we were the seller, in essence, you know, script it out for us? Oh, sure. Yeah. And I don't think it has to be some um, high level discussion because by this point, we okay, have just read the script. Yeah, right. yeah. I mean, it's really just that simple. You know, we've the whole reason why we showcased all of the different marketing um, resources or things that we can do right off the bat is so that they have a broad understanding about what that's going to mean. So then as we're going to this page, we just, you know, talk about bronze and our bronze package. Now keep in mind for this conversation with maps, we do not have percentages on this sheet at all. And in fact, in real life, we actually don't have a percentage on this sheet either. We first talk about bronze, silver, and gold, what's available in each package. So let's just start at the top and our bronze package, right? 
we have professional photography. We know, right, that 97% of consumers are going to find their house online. And so we want to make sure that the moment that your house is syndicated to every major portal around the, the world, right, we want to make sure that it is showcased in its very best light. So every one of our houses, every one of our listings is going to have professional photography. You'll also see here that we are going to do a, a walkthrough video tour. YouTube and, of course, other uh, platforms are huge for people who are still searching for real estate online. And so we want to make sure that there is uh, all of the consumers online can see the natural flow of your home. That's going to be available in all of our packages. 100 just listed postcards. We believe in every door direct mail. We believe that your neighbors might have somebody, right? They might want to choose their own neighbor. So we definitely want to make sure that everybody that is around you, all of every one of your neighbors knows that your house is listed for sale. Syndication to 100 uh, websites, including Zillow, Trulia, Realtor.com. Again, that's just about making sure that you get maximum exposure for your listing. And of course, we were also going to hit people on the social uh, in the social space, ensuring that there we do one sponsored Facebook advertisement. This is a targeted uh, Facebook advertisement. So that is available in our bronze package. Now, as we go to the silver, everything is available in bronze, but we're also going to enhance this with two Facebook advertisements. We're going to make sure that your home is featured in our monthly newsletter with over 5,000 people in our database for our team. We're going to do 200 just listed postcards. Again, just broadening the exposure that we're uh, getting for your listing. We're going to create listing flyers with QR codes to custom website for your home. We're going to ensure that you get a Matterport 3D virtual floor plan, as I showed you there. Again, that's just about allowing people to go left, go right, go up, go down, really getting a feel for the space as if they're really, really immersed inside of your home. Uh, we can also take care of the lawn service to enhance the curb appeal there. So as we discussed earlier today, you don't have the time, effort, or energy to spruce up the flower beds. You're moving next week, right? So I'm just elaborating here, whatever they've told me. And then... Granted, um, during the daytime, you get great exposure from the for sale signage, but we also want to hit people right the moment that the sun goes down. And right now, without daylight savings time, it's going down at you know five o'clock in our area. So from five to the, to the next morning, we're making sure that everybody that drives past your house is is seeing that your house is for sale and they can contact us immediately. Okay, so pa pa yeah, pause for a minute because I need to break it down a couple of things that you did really well that I just want to make before we go before we go to the gold package. Um, I just want to break down a couple of things that I heard here that I want everyone to realize. So first off, your, the reason why you created this, your original problem was you needed alignment with your team members such that the same message was being delivered you know, to the consumer, therefore you'd see the, the conversion. And it literally is as simple as you're reading the bullet point and then you're sharing the benefit. And so that's one thing I want to point out. You read the feature and then you share the benefit, right? Yep. You did that really well. I don't know if you're doing it. I mean, that's just you doing this forever over and over again, but you would read the bullet point and then you say, this is how it benefits you, right? You'd read the yeah. bullet point. I'm glad you pointed that out because in the beginning, I thought to myself, is it really just going to be reading the bullet point and discussing the benefit? And then as yes. I went through this with sellers, it is. <laughs> you know? And funny enough, the first, um, it just so happened that when we first started this, I would say, when did we start this, Kate? Like February of last year, it was right after a family reunion. Uh, I believe, that we came back and we put together the initial version of this. And then as I started to have more opportunities to do virtual listing appointments, um, it just kind of flowed in this very easy format and way. And the experience that the sellers had, not even knowing that it was the first time or the second time I had gone through this in a virtual setting, they were like, that was the clearest presentation uh, and the best presentation that we have ever had from a real estate professional. And we've sold blah, 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 how many, however many homes. Yeah. So, uh, no, no, look, at it. I, this is the gas station model, right? I mean, not the gas station, the um, car wash model. Mm -hmm. Is that the gas station for me? When, when I go to the car wash, it's up there on a board, right? Gold, silver, bronze. I can very quickly look at it and with clarity know what I'm getting with each, each package so I can quickly make a decision, which is usually silver, right? And that's what this is. Now, the second thing I wanted to point out, your transition from bronze to silver was brilliant. And I don't even know if you remember what you said, but what you said was with the silver, you get everything in bronze and then we're going to enhance it. We're going to enhance it with this. Yeah. I love that verbiage of we're going to enhance it. That, that was a great, that, that, that was a great dialogue. 
Well, thank you. Yeah, I mean, that's just how I, you know, it comes out of my mouth and that's what I say every time. Um, and the same thing would be from silver to gold. I mean, it's just about enhancing it and plussing it up every single time. Yeah. And, and, it, and of course you can see what's in gold, right? It's the same kind of a concept. What I will say here, right? And and, and I, I don't want to ever give um, this idea and this notion that it's nothing is negotiable inside of this, right? That oh, we do have certain customers. So, for example, maybe go back to the other page just real quick. Um, the the yeah. and you're going to have the consumer that wants to pick and choose. Can we have some of this and some of that? And how do you deal with that? Totally. So, depending on the listing and depending on the challenge that they may have, right? For example, we may um, aerial drone photography. So, again, we're in a waterfront area, lots of waterfront homes, and so. A particular customer may not need lawn service because their house is, you know, their lawn is well manicured. And yet we may want to do uh, trade something out for aerial drone photography. Does that make sense? We may have a very unique floor plan that um, uh, needs a 3D Matterport, or maybe it doesn't need a 3D Matterport, but maybe they need aerial drone photography. Does that make sense? So during the conversation, depending on the needs of the customer, it's not so it's not so hard and fast. Here's the packages. If you choose the silver package, we may trade something from the gold that you really need instead. And no. that's really the art of the conversation about the commission. It's not about changing the percentage. It's about changing the 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 feature, if you will. Yeah, but no matter what, it's going to be an enhancement to the bronze. Absolutely. So if they're picking around between the red and the, the black, you know, it's still an enhancement to the bronze. Even if they're picking around between white and red and black or whatever, it's still always going to start at silver because they're enhancing the base. Well, and even notice inside of bronze, we still have professional photography, right? So there we're absolutely assuring everybody's listing is going to show up brilliantly online. We're also doing every door direct mail. We're doing print. So we're doing print. We're doing social. We're doing digital. We're doing all of those features in bronze. And then again, in silver and gold, we're just enhancing that experience. So we're hitting consumers from all um, wherever they may live, so to speak. So now we've gone through that and to the next page, which is where the rubber meets the road in terms of helping them make the decision. Walk us through now that transition and that dialogue. Yeah, so at the top there, there's actually, we're actually missing a page here. Um, this might be going back and forth with maps from a legal perspective, right? We wanted to remove different commission structures and things like that. So we're actually missing a page as it relates to the homeward solution there at the top. Um, okay. We do have a page that has the buy before you sell option and the get a cash offer program from Homeward, who is licensed in our state. I am aware that in a lot of states they're not available, but there's other companies like Ribbon, I think is one. And, and oh. I even actually saw, yeah, a, 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 a lender sent me something yesterday with those options as well. So we talk about buy before you sell for our customers who do mean the fact buy before they sell. Um, or who just want the convenience, right, of not having to move twice and all of that. We also have um, the Get a Cash Offer program. So there, my only point is to say there is another page that we discuss. And really, again, that's just about making sure that we have covered all of the bases with that particular seller such that they know all of their options and they can make a smart decision for their own family. Right? Like you said, that, that page, is that's missing. It's, it's only explaining the buy before you sell, the cash offer programs. Um, yeah. that, that's really all it's explaining. And it so, has a link. Those are live links as well, okay. where it takes them to an exact example of what that means. So again, I can walk through that with, with the customer. So right. after that, it's just about them choosing their marketing strategy. So we will kind of direct back to the first section where we talked about the strategies. Um, a lot, in a lot of cases, I will tell you that the, the one that is most often chosen is the seller contributions. A lot of sellers are already familiar with that. They do know that um, closing cost with higher interest rates and down payments, closing cost is a real need for a lot of buyers, at least on the Gulf Coast, right? Our average sales price is about 325, 340, um, 325, 3, 330, somewhere in that range. And so seller contributions and concessions are a real important factor. Um, oddly enough, though, I've had a couple of people recently um, on the owner financing track. And again, uh, the temporary buy downs are uh, really important because of the higher interest rate environment. As things have tapered back just a bit, that's not one um, that has come up. Come up. Uh, let's just say I think I've been on four or five listing appointments this week. That one has not come up. So 
so we just kind of go into it. Would what would you prefer if you had to make if you have to make a choice, or you you can also see right here there's an option for none. But a lot of the sellers do want us to talk about seller contributions and seller concessions. And again, going back to Kate, she can now put this on our every door direct mail. We can put this on our social media post about the property that the seller is willing to do that right off the bat versus the buyers or whoever not knowing that that's even an option. Because in our market, I don't know if everybody's MLS is the same about this. We can't put that verbiage in the MLS description in our local area. Now, on the package, uh, again, you know, we, we took off the actual percentages because, you know, there is no standard and that's for you guys to choose. But in your in your real life package, you have a percentage assigned to gold, silver and bronze, correct? We do. So just below it, we featured the percentages yeah. um, under each one. And you'll notice on this page, we actually reversed it. So we put gold, then silver, then bronze. Okay. Yeah. So um, and again, uh, I had been. I, I, as I said it from the very beginning, I had a myth that all of the mega agents who are talking about this or who had initially started talking about this from the stage at the various national events, I just didn't believe that that would be the case in our market. And oddly enough, even this past week, we took, so our again, our average sales price is about 325. I just took a $600,000 listing in the silver uh, we took a 575 and a 525 in this. We've had one, um, uh, I think we've had one gold over the past six months. We've had several, several customers with quote unquote luxury properties for our market choose um, the two higher packages, uh, gold and silver. Now, if you, what percentage would you say historically choose bronze versus silver versus gold? If you just had a, an, estimate, an yeah, estimate. Yeah, I would say that, um, I would say roughly 70 to 75 percent still choose um, the bronze package. Okay. Frankly, by the way, it uh, goes kind of back to transparency. Um, in a lot of cases, I think that that actually is the package that some of our, our sellers should choose. Mm -hmm. When we look at their houses, um, right, it's either new construction, it's well-maintained, great curb appeal. The house is in an area that's going to sell pretty quickly. And so we believe that with our marketing strategy, that house is going to sell pretty quickly. And candidly, they don't need all of the additional enhanced exposure. And so that is the best decision from them. And sometimes we actually coach them to do that too. You don't need aerial drone photography for your house, right? So for your patio home, okay? So so um, that has been the case. But yeah, 70 to 75% end up choosing bronze. And I would say at this point, probably 20 to 25% end up going with the higher packages. Now, with this package, um, are you sending this out ahead of the appointment or are you strictly going over it with them at the appointment? I know you said there's links and all of that. So I'm assuming you're sending it out ahead of time. <laughs> not necessarily. That's not always the case at this point. I can't say that. Um, and, and at least in my experience, maybe leaving the past week, I've had somebody and like they want to have an appointment that day or the, the very next day. So we're just going right then. In a uh, perfect world, would you advise sending this out ahead of time? I, do, I think so. Yes, I, I, I do believe that in a perfect world, because again, because it provides so much clarity and it provides a lot of um, look with a lot of the options. By the time we show up with the one or two people that we have done that with so far, the conversation is almost is super easy. Really, what they generally have questions about are the strategies, not the tactics. They have questions about, tell me more about assumable loans. Tell me more about, you know, seller funded temporary buy downs. Can you go up to page um, two or three again? Okay. Uh, maybe it's right after uh, uh, item number eight. So right there, learn more. We actually recorded, um, we have a YouTube playlist. So if we send this ahead of time, you can actually click on it. I, I think that one's live if you want to. Should be. Well, if you just click on the QR code. You know what? The way I have it pulled up, it doesn't, it's not allowing me to click okay, on gotcha. it. So yeah. we have a YouTube playlist um, on our, again, our team's uh, uh, YouTube channel. And I have recorded short one to two minute videos explaining what each of those are. So again, when I'm having this discussion with someone virtually or even at their house, obviously everybody on the team is explaining what each of those options are. But if we have to, if we have the opportunity to send this to them beforehand and or, you know, obviously not every seller is going to make an immediate decision about whether or not they're ready to list. This is another great way for them to digest this information later, go back and listen to it once more. And then when every when all the decision makers can, 
uh, then they can make a decision. But that that U, uh, QR code does take them to a YouTube playlist explaining each one of those options. Awesome. Well, just be respectful of everyone's time. First off, yes, it's recorded, right? Yes, you know, you're going to get information about a template that the great Kate has, you know, created. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, Preston, just to wrap up, Kate, is there anything that we didn't ask or that you want to share just to put a bow on this? This has been, by the way, this has been awesome. This is awesome. Thank you. I think yeah. he covered it very well in 45 minutes. <laughs> it's as concise <laughs> as you can make it. Thank you for manning the chat, Kate. All right, go ahead, Preston. Yeah, no, I just think that, you know, listening to Gary talk about the fact that all of us need to have a very clear value proposition that we articulate in a seamless and easy way. Uh, to offer a sort of more transparent um, relationship with our customers. That's really what we were going for here. We've, we've continued to hear that over the past year. That continues to come up in within the industry. And I think at least at this point, this is our best way to be able to do that, at least for our team. And I think this is just a, it's an easy model to follow. And again, it we will contain, continue to enhance this process. I, I love the simplicity of it. I love that this is approachable for every agent, whether they're a veteran or whether they're brand new. Every single piece on that package can be used by anybody. And you've just done such a great job of presenting it. So again, thank you for being here. Thank you for all of you for, for watching live or on the recording. Um, we're here for you guys. Reach out and then stay tuned for the recording. See you, everybody. Guys.